Thank you, Judge Napolitano. What a pleasure it was to have him here. Hello, everyone. My name is Chris Rossini from the Ron Paul Liberty Report. So great to be with you today. Thank you. So great to be amongst like-minded people, which is rare in our lives, uh, especially with so many new people. So hopefully we have a lot of original content for you today. Um, I'd like to start by echoing my great colleague, Daniel. The regime is dying. There is absolutely no doubt about that. And uh, where do we get the gall to make such a proclamation? Here we are in a small ballroom. We have one poster behind us. There's no fireworks, no drone shows, no stadium filled with crowds. How can we say that the regime is dying? Where do we get off saying that? Well, if you're looking for the fireworks and if you're looking for you know, all the pomp and circumstance, you're looking in the wrong places. About 2,000 years ago, a little baby was born in a manger in the dirt with animals surrounding him. Yet the world changed from that lowly place. That's where you should look to find life, in the lowly places. When there's a man in Congress, and Congress is constantly voting every day, they call it work, to take away our freedoms. And one man stands up and votes no, 400 to one, 400 to one, over and over. Who is that one? Who is that lowly place? Who is that man? That's the man that changed everything. There were no fireworks for Dr. Paul. Everybody ignored him. There were, no, uh, there were no lobbyists. Boeing never came to see him. They walked right past his door. There's, you're not going to get anywhere with him. That's where you look for the lowly places. That's where we have the confidence to say, with historical knowledge of empires, how things work, how government works, that's why we can say with pure confidence that the regime is dying. There's one word that comes to my mind of, on why the regime is dying, and the word is internet. That is what they signed their own death warrant with the internet. Now, they use the internet for themselves because look what it's used for, surveillance. You know, tyrants want, they, they want that, you know, that triangle with the all-seeing eye? That's what they want. They want to see everything. They want to monitor everything, and, and they do a heck of a job. You know, they, ca they gather data on us Right this second, they know exactly where we are, what we're doing. But you know, most data is, is useless. You know? But they get, a, they get a kick out of it. They collect it, they think that it gives them all power, but all they have is a snapshot of the, of, of the past. You could have all the weather data going back to the beginning of time. It's not going to tell you what tomorrow is going to be. You can have all the stock market data that going back to the beginning of the stock market, it will not tell you what the price will be one second from now, no matter how much data you have. They don't look at it this way. To them, it's a religion. They actually have something called dataism. They believe that this is their religion. They can have their religion. But when they did that, they sacrificed one big thing, and they sacrificed control. You know, when my dad, my grandparents were growing up, there were three TV stations, and everybody watched them, everybody found out what was going on in the world, and that was it, an American flag came up, you go to bed. And that was it. And there were newspapers that all said the same thing. This is not new. But everybody read them, so when they went to work, there was nothing else to talk about because everybody got the same information. Today, that has been broken. That has been broken because every single one of us can choose who do we follow? Who do we block? Block the Washington Post. You never have to read them again in your life. And what that does is that gives the individual a fighting chance to get the truth. That doesn't mean you're going to end up at the truth. There's a lot of lies beyond what the government gives us. People lie too, constantly. But you have the ability that my father never had to get to the truth. And that is what is bringing them down because truth in an empire of lies is kryptonite. It melts them. They become like the wicked witch that has water poured on them. They melt and they're going crazy because they're playing whack-a-mole. They're going after Telegram. They're going after TikTok. They're, go they're playing whack-a-mole, but the truth is everywhere. 
There's no centralized. It's not Ron Paul. If you quiet Ron Paul, you go to Judge, there's Judge Napolitano. There's John Mearsheim. There's Dr. Mercola, everybody that we have here. They're just whacking it and, and hoping to silence, and it's going to fail because there is no central control for truth. So we have the opportunity of a lifetime, in our lifetimes, as dark as it is, and it is, I mean, when you look at our political situation, can it be any worse? The other side, this side is weird, we bring joy. That's politics today. <laughs> That's the level that it has come down to. But we have the opportunity to not only access the truth, but share it with one another. And by God, that is every one of our jobs, no matter if it's to two people, 10 people, 10,000 people, you just, when you have something that's true, share it, do your duty, every one of us, and they'll be whacking forever and they will never uh, be able to catch up. <laughs>